Hi, Phil 101. Um, we're on to section test two now, um, and the purpose of this video is to go over the test. Um, this is all basically the same as the last time. It's the same set of boilerplate. Um, about the section tests, there were 20 points. There are going to be short answer questions. Five of them were two each, and longer answer question, uh, which should be an argument. Um, or 10 points, right? So um, two sections each worth half of your overall grade. Um, anything that I say in, in any of the videos or in class or um, it, it, any of the videos that you were assigned to watch or anything from the text, this is all sort of fair game, um, though I'm not trying to fool you. It's just the nature of the material. Uh, missed assignment policy, you have to let me know, preferably in advance or or within 12 hours of, this, of the assignment that you missed um, or will miss in order to uh, get a deadline or to get an extension. Um, it, most of you, it's, lots of you know that I'm pretty forthcoming with these sorts of things, um, but I need a policy here because otherwise um, people are submitting whatever they want, which isn't fair to the rest of you and it's not fair to me since I have a lot of these to get through grading. Um, the, more, uh, the more extensions I give, the more we're all held up because I don't release grades until I have all of the assignments. And so um, assignment submission, it's your responsibility to make sure you uh, submitted your assignment, um, as, as submitted the right document and submitted it properly. If you're nervous, email it to me as well. Um, and I'll add something here. Be sure to save yourself time to proofread. Um, and then finally, plagiarism. Finger wag, finger wag. Don't do it. Um, just don't and we won't have any problems. But if you're using external sources, you must cite those sources. I'm actually really good at um, recognizing things from the internet in people's documents. And if you can find it, I can find it. And if I find it, you're in big trouble. Um, so just don't do that. Um, familiarize yourself with the course policy um, and the Oakland University's policy. And if you're unsure how to cite, um, I give you a link to CiteRight, um, sort of a training program uh, for citation on the syllabus. So, readings. Um, we're talking about Aristotle and the Nicomachean Ethics, um, and we're talking about Hobbes and his Leviathan. Um, five short answer questions um, related to these readings. Um, there's video t material as well. Um, that funny TEDx talk that I, um, I, I posted to Moodle, I'm not including it here. I'm not going to ask you any questions about it anyway. Um, School of Life Philosophy, Aristotle. Uh, School of Life Political Theory, Hobbes. This is actually the sort of uh, light area um, in terms of video content for these courses. Um, so anyhow, um, those are the videos that you're responsible for. Um, so short answer questions, these are minimally three sentences. And I, I, I want to be very clear about this. When I say minimally, if I don't get the minimum, you can't pass. Um, so it's make sure that at least three sentences um, constitute your response. Um, it, generally, the idea is answer the question until it's answered. It might take five or six, or you might be really concise. Um, your writing styles differ quite a bit, I've noticed, after the first test. So um, with regard to that, um, just, just make sure um, that you answer the question completely. Right? So generally, these questions ask you to do a couple of things. So um, one sentence won't do the trick. Uh, question one, um, there are going to be two on uh, Aristotle and three on Hobbes. Uh, briefly discuss the function argument discussed by Aristotle in book one of the Nicomachean Ethics. How, by this argument, does Aristotle arrive at his definition of happiness? Right. So there's actually a mechanism going on in this argument um, that allows uh, for if you know the function of a thing, you automatically know the good for that thing, and it suggests a methodology for achieving that end, which is the good for that thing. So I want you to first um, give me a treatment of the function argument. Make sure it's fairly complete, right? Don't leave out any major features of the function argument for Aristotle. And... Um, 
demonstrate how this argument provides the basis for the definition of happiness, which is an activity of this all in accord with virtue. Okay, book uh, number two, book two of the Nicomachean Ethics, um, Aristotle defines virtue of character and discusses how it's developed. Define virtue of character and discuss how it's developed. That's one. Right. And in um, Book 2, Section 4 of the Nicomachean Ethics, um, Aristotle identifies three requirements for uh, genuine virtue. That's on page 22, and I give you a reference to it there. Briefly discuss each. Uh, and um, in terms of a discussion, in, in, in terms of this kind of, kind of question, um, I know it sounds like I'm asking you to do a lot. Just introduce them. Right. Just like it, I don't need an exhaustive treatment of each, just introduce each of the three requirements. Number three, um, Hobbes introduces a rather bleak account of human nature and describes the natural condition of mankind in detail. Right? Uh, briefly introduce each, followed by a discussion of how, according to Hobbes, the state of nature, the natural condition of mankind, arises as a consequence of his account of human nature. So how is it we get from human nature to the state of nature? I'd say these are what humans are. This is how we find ourselves in our natural condition. And this is why, given our nature, this has to be our natural condition. Right, so um, it, that would be uh, the way to go about responding to that. All right, um, question number four in chapter 14 Hobbes distinguishes between a right of nature and the laws of nature. Define each, and note that I don't need a list of the laws of nature, but it would perhaps be good to introduce the first law because all of the other laws are derived from it. Um, in the same section, Hobbes introduces the idea of a covenant. Why are covenants important to Hobbes' argument? Right? And so, I mean, this is the idea of a covenant, a contract, an agreement. Right? Um, the first law of nature shows that peace is in our best interest. Our right of nature would have us defend ourselves by any means um, necessary. And at the end of chapter 13, um, what Hobbes points out about the laws of nature and the covenants about which the laws of nature are largely, um, what, 188, I think, yeah, about which the laws of nature are, um, it, it, what the laws, laws of nature are about. Um, <clears throat> Hobbes concludes um, in chapter 13 where he's introducing the state of nature by saying, and reason suggesteth, suggesteth uh, convenient articles of peace upon which men may be drawn into agreement. These articles are they which otherwise are called the laws of nature, whereof I shall speak more particularly in the two following chapters. All right. So the laws of nature right, are what draw us into an agreement. All right. What is an a, co a covenant? It is the agreement. You should be a little reminded of Socrates here. So anyhow, um, that is question number four. And then finally, discuss the covenant that gives rise to the commonwealth introduced by Hobbes in chapter 17, being sure to cite the covenant itself found on page 227. Believe it or not, I'm giving you a point for citing that covenant on page 227. I authorize and give up my right to govern myself to this man or this assemblyman on this condition that thou give up thy right and authorize all his actions in like manner. I know it, you know it, but it's important that we have a touchstone there, right? If you don't know what the covenant itself is, any discussion of the covenant that you're going to provide is going to be absolutely baseless. So, right, start out by citing the covenant. And I'll give you a point for that. Now, briefly discuss how this covenant, which establishes sovereign power, breaks down the distinction between public and private good in the person of the sovereign. Remember, that's essentially what this covenant is designed to do, break down this distinction between public good and private good. Remember in the case of bugs, generally we 
the uh, we tend to uh, pay heed to the distinction between our own private good what's good for us versus uh, everybody else's good the public good right? this is one of the reasons we can't cooperate like bugs later on in chapter 19 when uh, Hobbes is discussing um, the sovereign a monarchy relative to both democracy and an aristocracy right where either everybody has the power or some people have the power Hobbes is arguing in favor of one person having the power this is one of the strongest arguments in favor of a monarchy that Hobbes actually makes because in the person of the sovereign uh, the big scary mullet guy has all the power so what is in this big scary mullet's guy's interest is in the interest of everybody else and what's in everybody else's interest because he draws his power from everybody else's well-being right is in the sovereign's interest right so essentially what's good for the sovereign is good for the monarchy right what's good for the monarchy is good for the sovereign this isn't so in a condition where we've got to share power because what's good for me may be distinct from what's good for the state all right so um those are um the law uh, the short answer questions right um try to be direct with these right try to answer them try to engage with the particular arguments um that it's because largely what i'm looking for is an understanding of the mechanism understanding of the mechanism that's going on in each of these arguments um note that it, you know i'm not asking you to take a position in the short answer questions because you know to a certain extent i just want to make sure you know what's going on so um that's your goal for that section Part two, the longer answer question, I do want you to take a position and argue it. The longer answer question require a minimum of three paragraphs in response. That's no minimum of three paragraphs. A paragraph consists of a minimum of three sentences. That's just the definition of the thing. If you don't have three sentences, you don't have a paragraph. Uh, the goal of this section is to make a short argumentative account of the material at hand as directed by the question below. The idea of an argumentative account is that, well, you argue, you take a position and you argue it, right? So um, that is a portion of how you will be assessed for this question. So the question, the force of the argument offered by Aristotle in the Nicomachean Ethics relies upon a determinate concept of happiness, which he defines as an activity of the soul in accord with virtue, and our ability to attain satisfaction within our lives. It is the basis of this account of happiness that Aristotle it was on the basis of this account of happiness that Aristotle is able to make any of the normative that it should claims that he makes. You should be virtuous. You should try to strive to achieve the mean. You should, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, any of these should claims are best based on this determinate happy, uh, concept of happiness. Hobbes, however, argues, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, happiness for Aristotle is the end at which all actions really aim. Hobbes, however, argues that happiness, which he calls felicity, is simple, simply, quoting here, continual, continual success in obtaining those things which a man from time to time desireth that is to say continual prospering that is, uh, is that men call felicity Hobbes 129 if you're looking for it in here effectively for Hobbes happiness is getting what you want Hobbes goes on to argue that since desire is infinite and that power is finite happiness cannot be perpetual Accordingly, for Hobbes, all action does not aim at happiness, as Aristotle claims, but rather power, our pr present means to attain some future apparent good. Hobbes, page 150. Your task is to discuss the distinction between these arguments as presented by Hobbes and Aristotle. So here's Aristotle's concept of happiness. Hobbes reduces this notion of happiness to blah, blah, blah. Right. You should take a position in this debate um, it, it, that is, is Hobbes correct about um, it's all about power, Aristotle is correct, sat, uh, a satisfied life comes from happiness, it's not all about power, etc. 
right? So the question is, both give an account of happiness. Both accounts of happiness have far-reaching consequences. For Aristotle, happiness becomes virtue, and it all becomes about habituating ourselves and training our characters and entering into beneficial, harmonious political arrangements. Right? So, we become moral creatures on the basis of this greatest good, this end, which he calls happiness. On the other hand, Hobbes says, happiness cannot be attained, it cannot be perpetual, it cannot be used politically to ground a normative argument because all it is is getting what we want. So really what we want isn't happiness, we want power, the ability to get what we want whenever we want it, right? And it, that justifies Hobbes in actually building an apparatus that we call the Commonwealth, right? Which is a power structure to protect us from one another. One big point of distinction between Aristotle's concept of happiness, Aristotle links it to virtue. Hobbes, on the other hand, just links it to desire. Happiness concerns self-interest, but for Aristotle, we are not necessarily self-interested creatures because the virtues are both intrinsically and extrinsically valuable. Right? So there seems to be a big distinction here. Right? So I would like to you to engage in this distinction, take a position, and determine which of these accounts is the stronger account. Now, if you are not understanding these questions or what they're asking of you, contact me. Please contact me and we will be able to figure something out. Right? I'll be able to break down the question for you a little bit further. Um, it, just, just don't let it slip. Right? So um, if I'm here to help. Please let me know. I'm going to be answering emails. So um, that'll be the deal. And um, I look forward to reading your responses.